OK, so we're going to have a look at a proof of the famous Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, which uses Jensen's inequality. So there are quite a few different versions of Jensen's inequality, some to do with integration and measure theory, but the one that we need here is relatively simple. This is just a version to do with finite sums. And there's quite a nice way to view this geometrically. So we'll do that to begin with, just see where is this version of Jensen's inequality coming from before we then apply this to prove the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. OK, so we know that by definition, if f is a convex function, and let's say you've got some t between 0 and 1, and you've got some x and y in the domain of your function f, then this inequality is satisfied by the function. And we can picture this geometrically by basically saying that, let's imagine you've got a graph of your function, you've got your x and y are two different points here, then this tx plus 1 minus t times y, this is some sort of linear combination of x and y which lies in between them. You can see that f of this point lies below this point on the line in between f of x and f of y. So the height of this point is given by t f of x plus 1 minus t f of y. It's a linear combination of the two heights. And there's no reason we can't extend this sort of argument to having more points. So let's imagine that we had, maybe we have four points. So instead of having a line, some sort of linear combination of all of these points on the curve is now basically going to be some point inside of quadrilateral here. So let's say that we choose some points We'll, we'll call it lambda 1, x1, plus lambda 2, x2, plus lambda 3, x3, plus lambda 4, x4. So we've got now some points x1, x2, x3, and x4, and we take some nice linear combination of these. And if we choose our lambda i so that they're all positive and the sum of them is equal to 1, then this ensures that any linear combination of the coordinates of these points lies within the quadrilateral there. So this is basically saying then, just pictorially, because you can see that the polygon lies above the curve, then f of this point is always going to be less than or equal to the linear combination of f evaluated at these points. So this is always less than or equal to lambda 1 times f of x1 plus lambda 2 times f of x2 and so on plus lambda 3 times f of x3 plus lambda 4 times f of x4. Okay, so now we've got a bit of an idea where this form of Jensen's inequality has come from, and we can use this to try and prove the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. This is really quite a satisfying proof. It's, from here, it's really just a matter of making a careful choice of our function f, and also of our xi's and lambda i's, and then the result is just going to pop out once we apply Jensen's inequality. So we choose f of x equal to x squared. You can check really easily against the definition that this gives us a convex function. And then we choose our xi's to be equal to ai over bi, so assuming just for now that none of our b terms are equal to zero, we'll deal with that separately at the end as a special case. And finally, we choose our lambda i's to be equal to bi squared over the sum of all of our b terms squared, just with a different index there. So it's quite easy to see that the sum of all of your lambda i's is going to be equal to 1, because when you add all of these together, you just get the sum of your b i's squared divided by the sum of your b k squared, but it's the same sum, just with a different index. OK, so let's apply Jensen's inequality to our function f of x, equals x squared. So f of this sum just gives us the sum squared. So I'll just be a little bit lazy with the notation, write the sum over i of lambda i xi, this all squared. So by Jensen's inequality is less than or equal to the sum over i of lambda i multiplied by f of xi. So f of xi here is just xi squared. OK, so now let's substitute in our values for lambda i and xi and see what Jensen's inequality gives us. So we have still on the left hand side the sum over i and our lambda i becomes bi squared divided by the sum, we'll just write the sum over k, of all of our bk squared terms, then multiplied by xi, so we get an ai over bi, and then all of this is still squared, and this is less than or equal to the sum over i of bi squared divided by the sum over k of bk squared, so the sum of all of our b terms, then multiplied by xi squared, so this gives us an ai squared, divided by a bi squared term. Okay, and we can see here a few things are going to cancel. We can make this look a little bit nicer. So first of all, let's see our bi squared terms cancel with each other there. And this bi cancels with one of the bi's there, so we can at least get rid of the squared. And one other thing you might have spotted is the sum over k of our bk squared terms. This doesn't actually depend on i. This is just a constant. So we can take this outside of our sum. So let's do that. We'll put this into the denominator for each one. So now we've got on top the sum over i of bi times ai, so I'll just write these in alphabetical order, ai times bi, then this is all divided by the sum over k of bk squared, and all of this is still being squared, 
and this is less than or equal to, now we've got on top just the sum over i of ai squared, and then divided by the sum over k of bk squared. Okay, so this is actually starting to look like what we're trying to prove, and all we need to do now to finish off is multiply both sides by the sum of our bk squared terms all squared, so that on the left-hand side we're left with the sum over i of ai times bi, this all squared, this is less than or equal to, so you can see if we multiply by this thing all squared, this term in the denominator is going to disappear, but then we'll get an extra copy of this in the numerator, so we'll basically end up with the sum over i of ai squared, then this is being multiplied by an extra copy of the sum over k of bk squared. And this is actually exactly what we were trying to prove, that the sum of ai bi squared is less than or equal to the sum of your ai squared times your sum of your bi squared. And all we've done here is we've changed our index, so you could change this k back to an i, but what we've done here is we've proved the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, at least in this case, when all of the b terms are equal to zero. So what if some of our bi's are equal to zero? Well, we can start off with the left-hand side again. So we've got the sum from i equals one up to n of ai bi all squared. Then we can write this, because some of these bi terms are equal to zero, you can just get rid of those terms. So this is actually equal to the sum, we'll just write this informally of, over your i's such that bi is not equal to zero of ai times bi. So this is just, basically we've got rid of all of the terms where b is equal to zero. So this is the same thing because you're just getting rid of zeros in there. Okay, but then we can apply the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality that we have proven where we've got non-zero terms to get that this is less than or equal to the sum, again, just for bi not equal to zero over your ai squared, multiplied by the sum, again, over your i's where bi is not equal to zero of bi squared. Okay, and then what we could do now is we could add back in the remaining ai terms, whether they're zero or not, it doesn't matter, because we're adding in some stuff squared, so this is going to only make it bigger or keep it the same. So now we've got the sum from i equals one to n of ai squared, and we'll just leave the bi sum as it was just for a moment. And to get back to what we actually want here, you can see this is actually going to be equal to what we want on the right hand side. So this is equal to the sum from i equals one up to n of ai squared, multiplied by the sum from i equals one to n of bi squared. And the reason this is equal is because here we're just getting rid of the ones that are zero. So if you add back in a load of zeros, it's just going to keep the sum exactly the same. So there we go, we've proven the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality in both cases now.